and this building is now able to be used by this entire community.
introduce first uh, Mr. Thomas Mitchell. Everybody calls him Tommy. I used to call him neighbor. Uh, Mr. Thomas Mitchell is a native of Lexington in Henderson County, Tennessee. He was born October 3rd, 1967. He is the son of the late Manuel Mitchell, Lou Ray, and Thomas Elson Garland of Detroit, Michigan. He is also the grandson of L.C. Mitchell and Bassie Lou Flex, yeah. great-grandson of Bertha Lou Jones and Henry Lee Jones of Henderson County. Tommy grew up in church and at a very early age began singing in the church choir, Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church, with his mother and family. He later became a member of the marching band at Haywood Elementary and Lexington High School and Middle Tennessee State University Band of Blues. He is a member of Phi Mu Alpha, Sigma Phi, professional music fraternity, and served as the chapter chaplain for two years. Tommy has always been an in interested in music. He is presently a musician and deacon at Morning Star Baptist Church in Humboldt, Tennessee. He has been married to his wife, Ms. Star, for 20 years. They have four children and 17 grandchildren. He's a proud veteran <laughs> and still serves the area as a firefighter in the city of Jackson. Everybody, Mr. Thomas Mitchell. Jesus to walk with me. 
Oh 
I heard this song, I think about two years ago, and um, it blessed me in, in a sense because sometimes when you think about God and how much he loves each one of us, and sometimes we'll put a, put a limit on how long God loves us. Because we think because when we do something wrong, God doesn't love us as much as he used to. But God says, I love you forever. Uh, his, his love is, has, has no limits. You know, even when you don't do exactly what you're supposed to do, God's love has no limits. And, and, and quickly, some, some of us, some of us younger people, and some of us older people, and some of us very young and very young, so, so as soon as, as quickly we can notice that, the more worship we'll give God. Because God's, God's love is just never ending. He loves us forever and ever. So I'm gonna try to do this song. And I know I've gotten a request from, what's, what's this, the she? Thank she, she it, wasn't, it wasn't really a request, it was more of a threat. <laughs> no, it was a request. <laughs> but I'm gonna try to make, I'm gonna do this song and I'm gonna do that song. That that would be my last, and then we'll be ready for Brother Gerald. Amen. Amen. Cause I'm trying, I'm trying. My voice is not cooperating. So. Doing good. Doing good. <laughs> <laughs> the other, let me let me say this. I have had a lot of people that I looked up to. Uh, as far as singing, of course, everybody knows my mom and my dad, and some of y'all didn't know my, my father. He was a great singer, too. But this man here, I, I used to try to imitate him. <laughs> me, me and Omika would be at the house in the mirror trying to imitate this brother right here. Between him and our own, it was going to be one of the two. <laughs> because they have been so committed to making sure that the music of God's presence was always available in this community. Yeah. I think yeah. and brother, brother James Campbell, Lord help. I, I can't tell you an event that I, that I would go to and he wasn't present doing something. So I honor his name, I honor his name, I honor Miss Pearson, she's out there somewhere. Miss Pearson, Miss Pearson kind of was, my mama, my mama always gives credit to Miss Pearson for teaching her to sing. But Miss Pearson said she already knew how to sing. <laughs> she had needed a push. Yeah. 
All right. Everybody ready? You got your glasses on? on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just saying. Ticket number 119. Ticket number 119. 19. Winner, 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 winner. All right. <laughs> This time, we're going to take a brief 10-minute intermission. If you go down to the new library, some snacks and stuff in there, but just make sure you got those tickets, because at the end of the show, we're going to give away a tablet and a gift card as well. So, it's 10 minutes. We'll be back with Mr. Gerald Wayne. Give one more round of applause for Mr. Tommy Mitchell. I guess we can consider a pillar in the community. Uh, heard nothing but good things. I had the pleasure of having a conversation with him this week, and I'll tell you, he had me laughing so hard. It just, he's just a pleasurable person to be around. So, I'm going to introduce Mr. Gerald Wayne Dixon. Mr. Gerald Wayne Dixon was born and raised in Lexington, Tennessee, to Miss Nettie Bornhill Dixonville, was his mother, and Mr. James E. Dixon was his father. Gerald's first five years of school were spent at Cooper's Grove School, where his mother was a teacher. He attended Montgomery High School, grades six through eight. Gerald graduated in 1964 at age 15. The next few years were spent at home being caretaker for his mother and grandmother, who were sick. After the passing of his mother and grandmother, Gerald Wayne later attended Tennessee State University, majoring in music. Being a voice major, Dr. Eddie T. Goins was his major professor. After all, the music study, Gerald needed a job, so he began working for what is now AT&T. He worked for 32 years in time in 2008. Gerald Wayne is presently Minister of Music at Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Nashville, Tennessee. He has served for going on 53 years in Mount Calvary. that God has been so gracious to let him travel throughout Israel, Egypt, Greece, Europe, China, India, and on many cruises. For all the wonderful uh, travels and experiences of life, Israel explains, and for a country boy who picked cotton, to God be the glory. Give a hand clap for Mr. Gerald Wayne Dixon. Good afternoon, everybody. It's just good to be here today. And I really do mean that. It's really just good to be here. But uh, after so many years, I realize it's just good to be anywhere. Just seriously. Uh, last week, uh, not this present week, last week I had a play for a funeral on Tuesday, play for a funeral on Thursday. Play for a few on Saturday. This week was comprised of praise team rehearsal, choir rehearsal, and a funeral yesterday, <laughs> leading up to pastor's anniversary. Uh, but uh, yesterday I was fretting and whining and carrying on. I thought, I got this to do, I got that to do, I got this to do. And, and I had the flowers to take to a cousin and assisted living. And, and I was just going on, I thought, gosh, what am I going to sit down and Then the Lord Spirit just said, you know what you're complaining about. There are some people that would love to have that opportunity. Yeah. Oh, so people I was taking stuff to and assisted living, some of them, they could get their walking wheelchair or whatever. 
get to the bathroom, that's as far as they could go. So they would love to be able to get out and run around and rip, don't rip, run into a frenzy, but they would love to uh, have the privilege just to do what you complaining about. So with that said, it's just good to be here. But it's just good for me at 75 to be anyway. <laughs> so, but I'm thankful to the Lord because the Lord is gracious. I want to say again, I'm so appreciative. And give another round of applause to Brother Tommy Mitchell. <laughs> Wonderful job. And so Brother, Tommy, Brother Tommy set the pace because I'm not an entertainer. I don't come to sing to show you. I can sing a little bit if I'm if I'm not uh, if I'm on a good day. Cause sometimes my voice acts up, and I thought, well, I do what I can do what I can. But uh, on a serious note, God is just gracious. And even though this is a Saturday afternoon, this still is the day that the Lord has made. So we need to rejoice and be glad in it. So again, I, Brother Tommy just set the tone. Worship. It's all about worship. Uh, it's not about us. Uh, it's about the goodness of the Lord. He's gracious. I don't know your story. We all got different stories. But God has been good to all of us. All of us. And that's all I come today is to share. And I'm going to sing a few songs and get back on the interstate before it gets dark because I can't be seeing how to drive on the man. So with that, you know, I talk, I talk. I like that lady back in here from the the break, the bathroom break, I've been in the hall talking to Benny Sue and he lost about that time my mother whipped Piggy out of Cooper's Grove and sat on Piggy. Cause I got Piggy, Piggy hit my mother and my mother's been in jail these days and so Piggy said, you're not whipping me. And my mom said, yes, you, yes I am. And my mother went to hit Piggy, Piggy. Well, although hit my mother, the hook, she gave her a backhand. Of course, you know my mother wasn't the smallest thing on the block. So she gave me that backhand, it got Piggy down. <laughs> and so I guess my mother said, I don't feel like running around here after Piggy. She just sat on her because she got through with her. Of course, you know, it's a different day today. They do that. But that's how the kids, we had respect for our parents and teachers. I'll see the next day Piggy's mother was back down at the school. But she went down there with no gun and stuff. She was down there saying, Nettie Mae, if you need any more help with Peggy, because my mother was going through breast cancer and stuff, and you know, and if you don't feel like fooling with Peggy, just send somebody down the house. I'll come down here and whoop Peggy for you. So that was the difference in those days. But I know I'm at home because I this is where I first learned that people loved other people. And I'm still so appreciative of some of you all who pitched in when my mother was sick. And so just unconditional love you gave. And so I never take it for granted, even though it's been 60 years and I'm gonna shut up and start saying it. And so, but I just want to say I love you. I'm honored to be asked to be, come back home. And this is an honor, it's not something I owe or I'm older. It's just the honor that you all share the love. And I so appreciate all of you all. It's so good to see all of you all. And start by sharing Jesus, because he's the one that's been with us from the beginning of time. This little praise song says, Jesus, 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 there is something about that name.
song I want to share. Um, a few years ago when I retired, that first quarter, um, I had retired and I was all divested in portfolio, you know what I mean? I had a few bonds and a few uh, IRAs and you know how we do, you know, Lord bless you, you know what I'm saying. So I was diversified, you know, and then the stock market crashed. And uh, every time I give a statement, I lost a few thousand dollars. And I remember one uh, one night, uh, I came home, went to the mailbox, drove by the mailbox, picked up the little statement, and it was dark outside. And uh, I looked at it, and it dwindled again, it dwindled again. And I'm just sitting, you know, kind of depressed, and, and this, this little song, I never paid much attention to this little song. But this little song said, let go and let God. What the Spirit of the Lord said to me was, haven't I always taken care of you? As whether God takes care of us or not, it has nothing to do with how the stock market is doing. God is well able whether the stock market is up or whether the stock market is down. And I thought about the times after my mother uh, was buried, I had, this is not an exaggeration, house was paid for, and there was freezing the food. I had 75 cents, not 75 dollars. I had 75 cents to my name. And I knew my good friend, his wife is here tonight, Brother C.H. Carver said, well, Gerald, I'll see if I can. Uh, see if they need anybody. He was working at the shirt factory. And of course, I thought, I'm going to have to grieve in my spare time because I ain't got no money. I got to eat. <laughs> and I thought, I got to have a job, you know. And just to show you the goodness of the Lord, within, i say, a two-week time, I had a job at the shirt factory. Salan and Salan. And it was walking distance from the house because we sold our car because we needed the money, you know. And uh, I thought about those times and fear the Lord said, uh, haven't I always taken care of you? Have you had any hungry days? You can tell me I ain't had too many hungry days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes with Nick Bone, pig ears, what? I feel like Nick Bone. I feel like that Nick Bone. But I can make, I can pick a pig ear to you can cut it with a saw. <laughs> I can cut a pig in, you can just cut it with that little bristle upon me. Because you know, they almost gave them away. Give me some hot sauce, fry some hot water, fry some red mashed potatoes, sour fry, you can get it in our family. The Lord was taking care of us. So, this little song said, that's when I thought of this song. Let go and lock, let God, because it says, as soon as you stop worrying, Worrying how things could have been. That's when the Lord can come in and bless you. I'll stop, be, I'll stop talking. I've said enough. Seem to fall asleep. Getting a pedal. But the time to look at technology, get a little pedal. Let's see. Couldn't seem to fall asleep. So much on my mind. Searching for that peace. Peace I couldn't find. Then I knelt down to pray.
the story is it's telling you to let go and let God
not to pick them over nobody else, but two of my favorite people are the Pearsons. Cause I, I, she was one of my favorite teachers, if not the favorite teacher of mine. Cause she was music, she was the music teacher. And uh, I remember uh, when I did a little speech, uh, you know I can be quite comedic. <laughs> Not on purpose, but that's just me, you know. And uh, cause I was talking about Mr. Pierce, and he, came, he taught me biology, chemistry, and geometry. Wonderful teacher. But I was a cut up in that class. And I used to keep my, one of my best friends laughing all the time, Christine, Geneva Brown, that's who you know her name. She'd be laughing, I'd say something dumb, stupid, she'd laugh out, and I'd look just like, what's wrong with her? You know, <laughs> you know I'd say something dumb, just write it down, write tags, she'd laugh. That was the way I tried to get by. You know, I was yelling at everybody, so I tried to fit in, I cut up. And so, finally, Mr. Pearson found me out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he had a panel in his drawer that big. <laughs> it wasn't that big, but it was this size. I don't think he gave me the two click, but wherever he hit me was numb for a while. <laughs> and uh, cause I told this little story that uh, uh, when, I, when we opened the school, put the historical markers, whatever, opened the compass, and then we had teachers that lived in our neighborhood. They went to church with us. They loved us. They encouraged us. Because we didn't realize when we were students at TSU, I mean at Montgomery, Montgomery, going too fast, going too fast. I mean, maybe some did, but I didn't realize how blessed we were, even though in Montgomery we got secondhand books and secondhand this, but we did not get secondhand teachers. We had A1 teachers, and I had just taking advantage of all that was offered to me here at Montgomery. Because you could leave Montgomery and go anywhere. And, uh, but we had some great teachers, because I talked about it. They loved us, encouraged us, and then I thought, oh, and some of them said they beat us. But I said, oh, that's called discipline, discipline. Because my mother, would be, you know, she was one of those. She didn't, she didn't slack up. But, uh, 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 I don't know how I got here, but I'm here, and uh, I'm on this conversation I'm talking about. But uh, uh, I'm fixing to talk about his better half, other half, Mrs. Pearson. The song I'm fixing to sing, I got from Mrs. Pearson when she lived in Nashville. This is going to be my last song, but thank you all for your kindness, your love, all that you've shown. I just feel so wonderful being here with you all. But it's a song that I always sing when I come. But I got this song from when Mrs. Pearson was playing at Progressive Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's called I Really Love the Lord. And that really sums up how I feel about the Lord and worship and love the Lord. We all have different stories. Because the song said, you don't know what he's done for me. But my story is different from yours. But he's done something for all of us. All of us. I don't care how much money you've got and how, how good looking you are and how well connected. You didn't get this far by yourself. It was the grace of God for all of us. I only want to uh, say that to people. Because we can get, we get high-minded and, you know, think it's about us. It's not about it. It's about the grace of God. And so when I say, you don't know what he's done for me. You know, he may send somebody when I needed a ride or sent food when I needed food, but that was my story. Your story may be different, but God is so good. Again, before I sing this last song, thank all of you all for coming and thank you all for inviting me.
total today, aside from what we've already raised, of another $1,300. Mr. and Ms. Pearson to stand if you want to stand. Thank you. 